you have clicked on a video that will entail some of the most amazing piece of fiction you will see. The most outrageous, hypers and most mysterious plot are included into one. I love this story with all my heart and cannot wait to bring you all with me through the experience in a once in a lifetime event on the 31st of October during Halloween. Everyone watching make sure you leave a like and subscribe as I go through the entire story beginning to end with you but if you didn't know I'm Jake Xiao. All I ask is you leave a like, subscribe if you're new and watch the journey into one of the anime's greatest arcs ever created. October 31st, 2018, Shibuya. This was the date that the ghetto and the disaster curses plotted to trap Gojo into the prison realm. The current setting is that the curtain is 400 meter radius and was constructed in the Tio Cold branch. This resulted to the Jujutsu sorcerers going out on an assessment to determine whether or not they will be boosted into the grade 1 rankings which was vouched by Meimei and Todo. This curtain for some reason only trapped civilians, in addition blocked all communication not allowing any room to maneuver. Everyone is put into groups to be assessed so that they could go into the next category. First team entails of Megumi and Takuma Ino at grade 2. They are being assessed by Kento Nanami. While talking amongst themselves, Nanami asked the big question, where is Gojo? We found out all the civilians are being told to bring Gojo to the station. They were being told as civilians wouldn't know him. The second team we are introduced to consists of Maki and Nobara, with the assessor being Naobito Zenin. Meanwhile, Panda is being assessed by Kusugabe alone. The Shibuya problem has caused them to wait for Gojo to sort everything out. Kusugabe was expressing to Panda how peaceful inside the curtain was, but how much of a mistake that would pan out to be. What happened in the curtain was the fact that people were forcibly sucked into the train station. This allowed for more havoc to spread, but at last, Satoru Gojo arrives at 8.31. PM. Gojo seeing everyone close to each other and puzzled so he decides to walk on their heads to get to the necessary location. The deeper down the train you go, the more barriers you see that come up repeatedly to trap non-sorcerers, making it ever so clear. Yuji Tudori is also being assessed by Mei Mei alone and she is with a kid that hasn't been shown thus far and that was the younger brother. Yu Yu. Mei Mei is quite fond of Yu Yu, but they bring up the fact a new curtain has appeared at Meiji Station, so Yuji and Mei Mei proceed to go to that location. We swiftly transition to the main event. The curiosity has loomed for a very long time, and Gojo sees his foes, Jogo, Hanami, and Choso looking ready to engage in combat, and Gojo is very ready to give Jogo an ass beating again, but this time, Jogo looks confusingly confident. The top of the station is covered up so Gojo can't escape, but he is not worried. This man was oozing in confidence, ready to engage with any sort of fight that would come his way. But Jogo let Gojo know whether he liked it or not, they would still kill him or the humans in the station. And from the looks of it, the humans were being depleted fast. This makes Gojo think, but then he is hit with a domain amplification from out of nowhere. This makes Gojo frantically escape, he figured their total plan. The reason Dominion Amplification is so strong is because it bypasses the infinity. So the plan, the overall plan by the ghetto lookalike was to not allow Gojo to be alone. This would negate the alone advantage completely. There was a plan for Gojo to not use any of his techniques effectively and limit problems such as domain expansions. By bringing on more non-sorcerers, after all, it's set and done, Ghetto would deal with him along with the prison realm. Jogo is delighted, grinning from ear to ear at the fact that he believes Gojo is on the ropes, but Gojo says to him, I'm surprised you thought you could beat me, using your sorry excuse for a brain. Menacingly, he then directs his attention towards Weed, also known as Hanami. That is their third time meeting and he doesn't listen or learn, warning that Hanami is going to be the first to die. Gojo is definitely becoming a savage. Gojo walks up to them and then threatens them saying, weren't you guys the ones that said to not run away? 
The first thing that happens on reaction, Jogo throws a swing. This was a different Gojo response as he actually blocks the attack physically, in which to Gojo dodging a kick from Hanami and breaking Jogo's arm clean off. That was a critical hit for sure. Gojo even hit him with the are you ready kids? Spongebob edition before breaking it, in which he uses the broken arm to block Hanami's punch and chases Jogo down. Hanami sees an opening, an opportunity to strike, releases the domain amplification for a split second including the fact Gojo Limitless was deactivated entirely and then with nothing protecting Hanami, Gojo comes in, takes the roots of Hanami's eyes, pulls it out completely. Hanami was stripped away of their eyesight. Rule number one, don't deactivate your domain amplification because you can't use your curse technique at the same time that you're doing the domain amplification. Jogo doesn't understand, cannot comprehend that Gojo is this broken and this overpowered even without using curse techniques at all. Choso was still using blood manipulation everywhere but Gojo decides to wait it out and chooses to strengthen his curse technique to counter their domain amplification. But unfortunately for Hanami, it seems their power has weakened considerably to the point Gojo sees his prey wide open, obliterating the useless tree into nothing and he goes on to say, next. Gojo is him and is not even close. The scene transitions to Yuji going to the station as backup. But even then, Yuji comes to find Transfigured Humans has been around, resulting to him really understanding the magnitude of the situation because of who is involved, which is Maheto also. Meimei proceeds to use her crows, which is a part of her curse technique to share vision with them. Due to this, she was able to identify where all the chaos is taking place and has assigned Yuji to defeat a cursed spirit. She acknowledges right now splitting up would be the best option because the humans are currently getting funneled. Yuji lets Mei, Mei know he is done with losing. This puts Yuji up against a grasshopper. A cursed spirit won at that. The grasshopper had a heavy obsession with whether his opponent was smarter or dumber than they were. It is used to protect the curtain apparently, giving random facts to be smart. Yuji Itadori was tired with it and banged the grasshopper to the gut. In summary, make a quick work of it, leaving it in the dust. But the grasshopper seems resilient. We are told the grasshopper are most definitely stronger, especially at its size. But Yuji repeatedly continues to hit him in every single angle. But even then, the grasshopper has abdomens that expand and contract which is about to poke Yuji's forehead. But Yuji punches it and breaks in half, allowing the barrier to be free. This gives a signal to Maheto that a strong sorcerer is around. Now back to Gojo, he is pissed. After killing Hanami, Jogo is running with maximum efficiency and throws a punch to run away. Hit and run tactics, Choso is also piercing an old lady's head to get through but Gojo assesses the situation and knows the people are too inconvenient for him. Ghetto reinforces that the situation is too easy for Gojo at the moment, even though 20 minutes might be up. There is nothing that he can do yet, so he'd wait a bit more time. Yuji and Meimei are in talks and she says Yuji is pretty much a grade 1 sorcerer already as he exceptionally talented to defeat the cursed spirit that easy and unharmed, especially due to the fact that he can talk. But as they reach further into the platform, there is a warning from a person who turns into a transfigured human that he missed the train as well as it being full. This is a scary sight and the reason being that due to this, the train ended up working as planned for the villains, leading the train to be full of transfigured humans set by Mahito, released onto the platform, going onto the same platform that Gojo is fighting and then the massacre of many, many more people proceeds, more than Gojo himself can even comprehend. Mahito joins the frenzy and even talks about the fear of all these humans as fresh air, which is truly sick. Gojo is confused, acknowledging whittling down the number of humans is not their advantage as it would be the opposite, which is against him. Then 
Mahito comes in flinging into the action riding the transfigured human, attacking Gojo and tries to hit him. But Mahito lets Gojo know that he finds disgusting about humans is that there's so many of them and then unloads hundreds of additional humans into the mix and making it difficult for Gojo to weigh the net positive with the net negative. There is an explosion of many, many humans. Choso convergence along with Mahito's soul multiplicity bodied the lot. Gojo is sick, pissed off, getting toyed with by Jogo too, taking his arm. Gojo sees scenes of many people dying. In fact, Mahito points out Gojo is more cold hearted, especially in comparison to Yuji. Gojo is reaching the limit of which he's willing to sacrifice humans. Gojo is pushed into a war. He cannot kill humans as well, but he vows to make them think and agonize. Domain expansion, Ryuki Tenkai. The main expansion was used for an estimate of 0.2 seconds. This left some of the people that survived the incident to need rehabilitation due to half of a year's worth of knowledge was put into their brain at once. The cursed spirits would be able to survive as they regain their consciousness faster but a thousand transfigured humans annihilated in five minutes to the hands of the strongest Jujutsu sorcerer alive, Satoru Gojo. Until Prison Realm Gate Open. Gojo was in the radius of the Prison Realm and the way for him to be contained is to stay there for one minute but that's just one minute inside his brain. Gojo can process things fast which gets him trapped faster in real time and as Gojo tries to escape, he is with, with the Yo Satoru from his best friend that he thought he had killed. Gojo doubted, believing it's fake, believing it's a transformation technique. But before he knew, he was captured by the prison room. His six eyes may have rejected the fact that it's a fake, but in his soul he knew it was. All of a sudden, a brain from the top of ghetto head is revealed and says how do you know? This sick brain took over the body of Shiguri Ghetto, enabling him to use the body's innate techniques and use the body overall. Gojo had to remind the brain that before Gojo killed the body, the one who beat it up was Yuto Okotsu. With his copy and boundless cursed energy, after all this time, almost a year, he would be able to do it again. The brain has zero faith in him. I'm pretty much calling Yuta overhype. With that being said, Gojo was sent off to return in a perhaps a hundred, no, maybe a thousand years in the new world. Meanwhile, Yuji finds something on him and is Mekamaru. Mekamaru, who earlier won was deemed a traitor, is also there to give him an important message that Gojo is sealed. While this occurs, Gojo is speaking with the brain and out of nowhere, Gojo declares Ghetto to not get used like that. This causes an arm twitch at the neck of Brain which stuns it and causes itself to laugh hysterically. The Brain could not believe what has just occurred. This made it get into contact with Mahito to bring up a new theory. Earlier Mahito theorized that the soul came before the body but the body is the soul and the soul the body. That would explain why the host body memories are retained. It wouldn't be able to be explained. Maito also points out that wouldn't it be differently because we are different from everyone else. So it would apply to everyone instead. So the technique dictates their worlds. Huh. Even Brain felt it was poetry. While all this talk was going on, Gojo was bored, could not be asked, could not be bothered and he just says hurry up and seal me. The brain liked the sight of Gojo in the situation but he then he hits him with the gate close and that officially was the seal of Satori Gojo. Mekamaru tries to continue pleading his case in saying that Gojo is sealed. He resulted in explaining that what he is now is a contingency plan, nothing more, nothing less. Explain to them to the correct way to go about and keep pushing. And then the comes the cursed spirits lined up for them. Back to Brain, it seems Choso and Jogo were finally waking up. 
after the Gojo domain expansion. Maito was the first to wake up already, most likely due to the fact that he's most in tune with his body and soul. But then, something happens. Everything is shaken. And then out of nowhere, the prison realm falls to the ground, creating a mini crater and made brain sick that this guy is crazy. Gojo inside realizes, time does not pass. He knows he messed up, but it's okay. He believes and trusts everyone. So now everyone outside of the station has grown suspicious of everyone and everything. From the way the barrier are operating to the amount of people, especially how the barriers were put in after Gojo got in. This causes Nanami to separate from Megami and Eel. Overall, all three groups decide to join the battle at the same time. Moving swiftly on Ijichi gives orders to Nita for a means to establish connections and communication. But Haruto stabs him in the back, which causes Ijichi to fall to the ground, wounded. Yurume was there, instructing Haruto on attacking people with suits, since picking on the weak is kind of what he likes to do. Back to Gojo in the prison realm, the seal is complete, but the prison realm needs time to process Gojo a little bit. This leads to Maito noticing parts of Mekamaru watching him, and he proceeds to destroy it. Tadori is told that he can't move. Yuji is like, why? But is reminded that because Satoru Gojo is him, that is why they can't move him. As Yuji goes out, he gets through the barrier and destroys transfigured humans or cursed spirits. Along the way, gets to the top of the building and bellows, Nanamin! Gojo's sensei has been sealed. Instantly, everyone hears and Nanami moves quick. Ino and Megami should join Yuji because if what he said is true, or all humans in the country, which even the disaster curse and Kenjaku hears, knowing that their jig is up. So they make plans. Choso plans to avenge his brother and kill Yuji Tadori and Nobara in the process, then retrieve his brothers from Jujutsu High. Jogo also said Yuji's off limits. Maito also has plans for Yuji and that's to kill him. Jogo is told by Maito that they do not even need Sukuna due to Gojo being gone. It is commonly known that as long as curses emerge as the true humans, as long as the error is curse filled, meaning that they pretty much replace humans and are now the real humans. So Maito creates a little game. If he encounters Itadori first, then he'll be able to kill him. And Jogo can restore Sukuna if he wants, if he catches him first, while Choso also wanted to take part. Then suddenly, as they were leaving, Brain notices two girls in the crowd, which were the disciples of Ghetto. They wanted the body to be returned to them, and as they've done what the Brain wanted them to do, they said that the deal was for Ghetto's body to be returned. But the Brain actually says to them that he believes that they lost their minds, especially due to the fact they didn't even utilize a binding vow. But the Brain was told he would regret doing that and in response the brain hasn't felt regret in a long long time furthermore yuji it was still shouting for nanamin but he pulls up right behind him megami had to stop him even they are caught up to speed by the mini mekamaru on yuji's ear being told what has happened but their main job is to lift the curtain nanami is going to check on ijichi and the rest of them should pretty much sort out the barrier. Ino is entrusted with taking care of the two, so the feeling of being relied upon remained, making him take the role. But in the midst of this, we get an explanation to what happens now that Gojo is sealed. The Gojo family is a one-man team of Satoru Gojo, who is really selfish. The people allowed to live due to Satoru Gojo might not have the luxury anymore. Secondly, balance of power will collapse. That ultimately means the villains that are generally in the shadows because of his existence now comes out. Everyone has time to make a move, so the sorcerers are in a huge deficit at the moment which is pointed out, meaning that the human age of Japan could be over if they lose. That's why the job is to rescue Satoru Gojo. One of the first set of people to be happy with the seal of Gojo was a man by the name of Awasaka and the granny Ogami. 
With the job of cursing and being cursed, the removal of Gojo has them arise. Yuji screaming helped with that. Exactly. So in an attempt to take down the barrier, Yuji strikes it and even shocks Ino on how strong he is, comparing him to Nanami. But the barrier won't budge, but Ino may have figured out the works of the barrier. So somebody outside of the barrier is causing it to become as strong as it is, enabling them to negate the obvious positioning to target the enemy. So at the moment, they make their way to the top of the tower with Niwe and set a method to capture them, which consisted of Yuji and Niwe tying the rope between each other and capturing them in the process. The rope given by Maki. So Ino with his smart deduction skills finds the origin of the barrier and goes and proceeds to break it. Although Ino thought he destroyed it, Awasaka had two in his hands as well and the job was not done. But he then goes flying. Niue becomes deactivated and they drop the old man onto the ground, while Granny and her grandson still have to go up against Ino. Awasaka on the other hand was ready to brawl and tried to fake his death. Megumi already caught him out so it was pretty much a waste of time. They know from the bat they can't waste any time on nobody. But Ino has a flashback. This flashback dives into a conversation with Nanami, unfolding why he wants to be recommended by him specifically so bad. To the point where Ino acknowledged he asked himself in difficult times, what would Nanami do? Meaning he could be a grade 1 sorcerer if he wanted to, but just needed the approval of him specifically. He is very picky on doing things the fundamentally correct way and this is why. So he then summons the auspicious beast summon, number 1, Kaichi which hones in on the opponent. When Ino covers his face, the mask becomes a spiritual medium and he summons all four abilities to his disposal. Meanwhile, Asaka is being boxed by Yuji and Megami, but the chemistry is all over the place. While beating the opponent, they, they have such different ways of fighting. All of a sudden, Asaka pulls a weapon which cuts Yuji's stomach, but it's just by a scratch, before Megami flings away Asaka with the frog. But for some reason, he was taking zero damage. Ino's also doing his part against the grandson, fighting him and defeating him. So the grandson is looking over the grandma more than necessary to see and protect her at all costs. So something seemed a little bit suspicious as she chants and chants. And then it began. The grandson ingests a pill, which Ino reacts to attack and it was too late. The grandma says the words, Toji Zenin. And almost instantly, we see Toji Zenin being carved out from the grandchild. Before this big break and the return of the Gojo Killer, we go back to December 7th, 1989, the day Gojo was born. On that day, the granny was doing treacherous acts taking over people's bodies and killing their loved ones in the process. Kids, babies, you name it, Awasaka was also part of this nonsense. But the key point is that the bounty they were given was 100 million to kill Satoru Gojo from young. So it was first come, first serve. They waited for him in the cafe, but then the grandma shook her drink and the Awasaka individual looked outside of their window in fear as they were already detected by the young boy to the point they didn't even believe they were free anymore. In fact, they used to be but no longer. Megami in his fight with Arasaka is very confused as to how he's tanking everything and in all reality, it couldn't be something that can beat Gojo. So Megami uses rabbit escape in which Arasaka responds to it and Megami figured it out. But back to Ino versus Toji, it seems Toji was about to fight him. The first thing that happens, his mask gets taken off without even processing the situation and the barrage of punches repeatedly meeting him until he was out of it. Then back to Megami's plan, he drops a maximum elephant on his head top and makes it disappear out of nowhere. He is hit with a car straight away and with ease, he, with the final attack comes Megami dodges his swing and we are introduced to the curse technique, inverse. While his technique is activated, other people's strong attacks become weak and weak attacks become strong. The harder they fight, the easier to win. And they figured out during their plan which leads to Awasaka even coughing up blood all thanks to the told weak tongue attack. Then a desperate swing in the most ironic way from Awasaka leading to an adjusted right hook from Yuji Tadori 
taking him out cold. The all of a sudden, Eno is dropped on 41 stories in the air, but is saved rigorously by Nui. He was also massacred, but Toji Zenin was being controlled by the grandson, or so it seemed. The orders were given to go down and lay some groundwork, but it seems Toji Zenin actually arises and is baffled by the grandma giving him orders. She only accounted for the body information, but Toji's soul somehow came into play and he remembered sorcerer were meant to be killed and decides it's time to finish the old hag in a second. Yeah, that's what she gets for telling him what to do. Ino is not dead, but brutally, brutally beaten. Yuji wanted a piece of Toji which would have been hella entertaining, but his job was to save Gojo within the Shibuya station. Megami's job right now is to get Ino into good care, since he's beaten up very, very bad. Megami is worried but Yuji Todori reminds him, if you die, I'll kill you, right? But although it was time to split, we are reminded by the tragic event of Ijichi and Nanami and it begins that Nanami hovering over his body seems to be tired of this. In the other side, Meimei is also in a fight with the cursed spirits, she has the ability to max out her physical capabilities. While she wields her axe, she actually wanted to master her cursed technique but also with it being crows and then achieved grade 1. She took the mick by saying the value of life is a proportion of your usefulness. Then the cursed spirit knowing they'd lose didn't know how to answer that question which led to their death. Barrier was lifted from before and Kenjaku surprised they've done it so quick. Then the scene shifts to Nobara running with Nita. Haruta encounters Nobara and is excited to fight against her in this time. But amongst all, Nanami is just, just tired I believe. Thinking about Haibara and Ijiji, that's when Nita lets Nobara know Ijiji sounded as if they were attacked. So they go towards that location while Maki is with the old Giza, now Buto, exercising curses. The plan is for Nita to run in and go to Tokyo to trick Haruta. Haruta was going to deal with Nita and he did. Haruta's sword tracks Nita down and cuts him. This made Nobara seem like fodder in which he kicks Nita in the stomach after going down before punching Nobara in the chin clean. Like so clean she got to be put on her knees. She is in disarray. Haruta also antagonizes her completely. Nobara then tries to buy time but he still stabs Nita Nobara then arises and is about to attack Haruta because she is now visibly angry. But then, a man that is filled with anger and disgusted, having enough of this unfair world treating him wrongly, walks into the building. Nobara and Haruta stops. Nanami comes to change the game. Nita calls away from Haruta while Nanami is in front of Haruta. But then, in this, anything Haruta did seemed to scream game over. Nanami was hit by him and it was like a brick wall. So to let off some steam, he hits Haruta to bounce off the ground with the optimal 7-3 ratio. Haruta even admits the way he got hit, he should be dead. That's why not answering questions causes you to fuck around and find out. Nanami asks again. How many of you are there? Haruta says again, I don't know, and a gut punch to the stomach blazes Haruta covering up blood heavily. Haruta then tries to use his sword, but it meant nothing. Nobara literally strikes to the top of the sword to stop the sword attacking Nanami, and it gave Haruta no chance to escape. Nanami mentions some people are dead in black suits. It was even an I'm sorry that he received from Haruta, which meant absolutely nothing. Getting Haruta packed up and showing Nobara the difference between a grade 1 sorcerer and her current grade. The current problem is Yuji Todori wants to enter the station but he couldn't bear to see people get injured by cursed spirits. But Togi Inomaki comes through, comes in the clutch and activates the move, giving Yuji their ability to escape. Fast forward into the future, Nanami and Nobara catches up with Nita and then explained the situation and Nobara was told, almost humbled, 
saying she cannot join Nanami since she is not a grade 1 sorcerer. Next is Mei Mei vs Brain. Brain notices she is swiping the cursed spirit which put her into another fight. She is stressed wondering how on earth Ghetto is alive, not knowing his body was hijacked. Mei Mei fought a cursed spirit that could use a domain expansion. But at the same time, Yuji met with Choso and they also collide. And from now, I'll be showing you the fight between Yuji Tadori and Choso. Spirit. Yuji sprints off fast so then he could be able to save some people in the process of trying to get to Gojo. That didn't last long though. He encountered Choso in the process. Yuji killed his brothers, Esso and Kechizu. This led to him raging and using blood manipulation instantly, the piercing blood version which was straight up to kill Yuji Tudori from the jump. This was blocked by Yuji Tudori, but the pressure was so much that Yuji had to deflect it away before it caused any more damage, but unfortunately his left arm became out of commission. Choso feels a punch from Yuji and feels the famous double impact. This left him surprised, for sure, and it didn't stop him from asking the ultimate question. Did my younger brother leave any final words with you? To this day, I don't even know why Yuji told him, but he let him know they cried. I think that was a bad idea, buddy. This made Choso even more infuriated and caused him to become much more adamant to finish everything off as quickly as possible. Choso gets ready, goes for another piercing blood to the point where Yuji even feels like he's about to die. But thinking quick on his feet, he jumps. Choso knew this was bait, but he wanted to see what Yuji was all about and why he did it. So pretty much, he shoots and with the swiftness, Yuji dodges and comes towards Choso, coming in for the close hand to hand combat. Yuji leads in with a right hook, looking to do a gut punch, and then Supernova pops off with blood, hitting the back of Yuji Tadori. The blood manipulation Supernova is blood condensed by convergence that is released and shot out in every direction like a buckshot. Not only that, the stab into the foot straight into Yuji, but Yuji still kicks back with the stabbed foot. This man is insane. The knife stuck in his foot was actually sent away, away from Choso, and then after with the athleticism of Yuji was able to manipulate and punch the side of Choso. The anticipation of the piercing blood putting Yuji on the back foot, but then he faked out this enhancement of the body like we've seen with Noritoshimi do against Megumi, Yuji is getting outmaneuvered in every way, getting comboed and to finish off his hit with convergence piercing blood. That's got her. Choso didn't condense the attack enough allowing Yuji to survive the pierce to the belly. So Yuji was very very lucky. Megamaru comes into the car to help Itadori and figures out the opponent technique due to being with Naruto Shikamo from school. The blood technique is seen as the most balanced, whether it's long range, close range or mid range, meaning the weakness is not blatant at all. In fact, they'll go as far to say Choso doesn't suffer from blood loss as well, meaning that he has no weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only one idea, one thing that could possibly work and that's when Makamaru instructs Yuji to go to the bath and I did that had only 10% chance of working. Choso battle IQ is quite high as he deduces Yuji is having a plan in place for such weaknesses. But Makamaru taunts him as his brothers and that makes him go into the bathroom making him riled up to try and avenge them. He gets into the bathroom and attacks Makamaru and then gets snuck up by Yuji in which he blocks. But the whole point of everything was to get him under the water. In doing so, it prevented Choso from being able to use blood outside of the body. We are then blessed with one of the coldest panels to date in Jujutsu Kaisen. Choso is confused but uses the blood inside his body which was flowing red scale at the start. Yuji recognizes the ties has changed and now Choso is on his turf, the essence of pure hand to hand combat. I can win. Choso, while having blood imbued and compressed to its very limit in his hand, making sure it was not exposed to water, pierces Yuji's liver. Yuji was hit with a blood meteorite. Yuji was thinking loads of things like, I was too careless, I didn't think there were any more projectiles, where did I get hit? And more. He said he's going to lose, he's going to die, but then Yuji snaps out of it. The mistake he made before against the finger bearer, thinking that he was going to die and being scared, all changed at that very moment. All he thought was using all that fear as cursed energy, the acceptance of his role to free Gojo. Even if it means he dies, Choso stressed out because three hits is all Yuji has done to him and it's caused him so much trouble. The meteorite was lucky, but because I caught him off guard, Choso has distinguished Yuji as a severe 
threat to the point he is willing to risk from roses back to the water settings yuji gets in the cubicle closes the door even choso is like huh why, why, why would you do that then a kick straight into the face of choso stunning him and hitting him with a harukarana now time for that finishing blow yuji wasn't using his left hand the whole fight he made sure he thought he was injured yuji trying to be slick with it catches him off guard or at least he tried to then he hits him it was a bit of a funny weird hit but the next thing that happened was a rip a full attack by choso around the shoulder of yuji completely hurting him battering him smashed into the wall and yuji was done yuji was on the verge of death itself at the hands of choso until that moment a memory was born in choso's brain of a past event that never happened oh, oh, okay. oh, he needs God. some milk memories that showed family but in this case brothers so Mei, Mei continues with her fight against the domain expansion user the cursed spirit and keeps breaking out but she relies on Yu's to build domain to help her in the end and finishing off with a bird attack and the quickest way to raise your level as a sorcerer is to have a binding vow with your life as a trade-off that is what she does for the black bird as it is forced to commit and their cursed energy manipulations are at an all time low only gojo in her lifetime has fought this attack and survived and with this being the case the main man himself had to come through ghetto slash brain letting her know you're not bad for a jujutsu sorcerer of this era so after this memory was born Sukuna is puzzled how Yuji lost to someone he deemed as inferior but Choso is borderline shocked in how fearful he is due to the memory that was born in his brain. Itadori is his brother but it didn't make sense. But that was the least of their problems because two kids that were under ghetto find Yuji Itadori and plot on doing something so asinine. Before that we were shown Naobito and Maki talking with Nanami, receiving the news about Gojo and the fake ghetto. They tried to turn Maki away, but Naobito was drunk, so she was somewhat excused to take part. Suddenly, from the peripheral vision, they spot out a body of some kind of fish, which is Dagon, a disaster curse, but Naobito, quick burst of speed, captures Dagon in the frame, hits them out of it. With that being the case, Dagon thinks about his cursed friends and remembers Hanami is dead. In which, in addition, as to the rise of his ability and making him absolutely furious, evolving into his truest form, it was just a cursed womb. And now is this beast. Without struggle, it almost instantaneously brings forth a huge flood. This forces them to seek for a drier platform and Naobito ends up antagonizing Dagon by asking if Dagon knew how many frames it is to be animated in the sequence. Dagon responds with the names of himself and friends while Naobito is speaking about frames. They shout at each other leading to an enemy attack being blocked and Naobito turns Dagon into a frame and Nanami takes a hit at Dagon Maki on the other hand was just falling behind, being saved by Naobito, pretty much being helped all the way as she was holding them back. Naobito really seems to use his speed to gain the advantage clearly, even going into the air to combat Dagon, bullying him almost. Dagon even saying Naobito faster than Jogo, so fast that the techniques have no time to activate. But all of a sudden, Royuki Tenkai, the main expansion. Dagon summons a domain expansion, forcing them into the situation. Naruto uses his falling blossom emotion, an anti domain technique passed down in the big three Jujutsu families. It is a counter attack with cursed energy whenever the moment the can't miss attack is in order. Following up from that, Dagon launches a technique, Release Death Swarm, which shows fishes relentlessly attacking. 70% on Naobito, 30% on Nanami. Nanami let Maki know attack if you feel hit because you won't even see it coming and you need strong durability. In which Nanami gets instantly multiple fishes biting him 
and this led Naruto using his domain to save himself but a surprise punch by Dagon releasing him to the ocean and large barrage of fishes start attacking him. Endless Shikigami stream and Maki's the weakest hence why there's no fishes on her. But then, out of nowhere, Megami comes out from the cut. Dagon baffled on how foolish it is to enter a domain with the Chimera Shadow Garden and gives Maki the playful crowd. This results into Maki sending Dagon flying. Dagon sends a swarm to Megami because the short hit effects is gone due to Megami. This main enemy come from the cut uh, with one of his eyes actually gone and destroys fishes trying to attack Megami. Because now it's not instantaneously coming onto them, he's able to hit them out of the way on reaction. So Naruto also pops up with an eaten arm still attempting to fight Dagon. But bearing all of this in mind, Megami is reaching his limit. But his objective is not to defeat Dagon with the domain expansion, but to actually escape the domain by creating a hole big enough to, as neither Dagon or Megami can use multiple domains in one day. So with one great shout, assemble. This causes them to get to Megami as fast as possible. And Dagon firstly thought they were trying to protect the boy, but then he realizes that they're trying to escape. In the midst of this, almost escaping, they all bear witness to the bare flesh of the one who is free, Toji Zenon. He came out of the hole Megami created, like some sort of psycho. This was also crazy experience and seemed like a little bit of a Zenin reunion. Megami confused who this is, Toji grabs Maki and threw her instantly, Zuka's energy entirely showing her he is superior. The hole is closed and won't be able to be easy to do again. Dago now knows the grandson that took over Toji was meant to be lasting for around the time his curse energy ran out. But due to Toji's body, there's a difference in the technique and it has no limit as how much he can control over his soul. Now he has just become purely a puppet of carnage, fighting instinctually, bearing his fangs towards the strongest around. Dagon begins to use his swarm and the playful cloud destroys the swarms and keeps increasing his speed, breezing by them. On top of that, Maki admires him from afar and asks Naobito who he is and could only answer to Maki, a ghost. Furthermore, starts doing the unthinkable and started rubbing playful cloud together. Everyone was mesmerized by how he could do such a thing. And while Dagon tries to levitate, you can see Naobito again from the cut, saying, oh, so you can levitate. Hitting him in his head, preparing it for a Toji masterclass to actually come and reach, which resulted into Toji combining his playful clouds like a pole vault, maneuvering it and striking its head. The strike after the stab was constant stabs again and again and again, which obliterated Dagon into another world. Killing the water disaster curse, now although the enemy is defeated, what's next is what is Toji about to do? Who will he attack next? That answer was his own son, Megami. He was then taken outside so fast that Megami compared it to Sukuna's speed. But back in the building where Megami and Toji left, there is one huge issue. The disaster curse, Jogo, appears and it doesn't look good. They knew it was all over from then as someone who is even more powerful than Dagon shows up. Jogo burns Dagon's body to rest in peace. This is when Jogo takes them out one by one by one. Nanami, Naobito and Maki were done. It was hella brutal, I'll be honest, honestly it was insane. Naobito did try and combat it with his projection sorcery but it ended up meaning nothing even though he was the fastest after Satoru Gojo. No time to process the situation, Sukuna's presence is felt by Jogo who immediately goes to hunt them down. Nanako and her sister were feeding Yuji the fingers of Sukuna. Jogo immediately pulls up and the markings were coming. Jogo decides to heavily feed Yuji so Sukuna can take control. Nanako and sister survive and they also bow their head. Sukuna tells them to bow down but Jogo didn't duck low enough and ended up cutting his head. Then he goes towards the two girls, asking them what request would you like? And they wanted at the end of the day for the brain to die, to get killed, all because they took the body of Ghetto. 
So, Sukuna tells them to raise their heads and without thinking, kills one of the sisters. Nanako screams for her sister Mimiko, who was obliterated at the scene. And Nanako was next up, getting her head cut off squeaky clean, making them both dead. Sukuna also asks Jogo if he would like to request anything, but Jogo replies no. This would be due to the fact that Sukuna is already alive and fulfilling his part, which is just to be here. This is exactly what they would want. Now, the curses are fully back and taking the lead. So, Sukuna realizes that Jogo is desperate and gave him a proposition. Ultimately, Sukuna will kill every human in Shibuya if Jogo can land one punch, and it was a deal. Then we go back to Megami and Toji, which by now, you guys can tell this is non stop hype and action during the Shibuya arc. Megami and Toji come up against each other ready to rumble. Then Megami feels Sukuna's presence in Shibuya and he's even confused like what the hell is happening in Shibuya. Then he uses rabbit escape against Toji, but Toji instinctively charges in and Megami makes a run for it. Now we change the pace of everything by going to the Metropolitan Expressway in which Soko Ieri is healing Ijichi and Ino. She has a gift of being able to use reverse curse technique on people other than herself. So the ability to heal others, pretty crazy. Back into the action, Megami goes into a narrow road, fighting off against Emaki but fully realized. But as Megami is having internal dialogue with himself, he almost gets stabbed but his shadow was able to bait Toji and he tried to stab him but it ended up not working. There then becomes a flashback to Toji trying to sell Megami off due to family treasures technique but it seems Toji is doing it from a good place as he believes it would be the best for him to grow up somewhere else. So Toji asks Megami for his name in which he found out it was Fushiguro. This resulted into Toji being joyful and killing himself in the process to save Megami so that he doesn't aimlessly attack his son and that shows the father's true love. Megami wondering why this weird phenomenon entailed, he then tries to travel towards Shoko or Maki and the others but before that he gets sliced by none other than the luckiest man ever, Haruta, ecstatic with killing the weak. Moreover, we transition to Kusakabe and Panda. They have been going from building to building to building during this period. Kusakabe is doing everything but going to B5F because he's trying to survive, making excuses for not helping Gojo and he really doesn't want to die. But the smoke came to them, the people who went under Master Ghetto just inheriting his will to carry on Ghetto's purpose. It seems the Master Ghetto camp had a fight when Ghetto died to then decide how to progress after this. Lori stopped the arguing and let them know they are family. Everyone should follow what they feel is correct, giving them their own individual mind. Kusakabe is happy to fight since they are not any special great curses really. Bringing out a evening moon sword drawing, a Kusakabe technique. And as everyone is prepared to fight, from nowhere, absolutely nowhere, there's buildings, windows shattering and a lot of craziness unfolding, everyone's confused what it is. And it was Sukuna beating the living daylights out of Jogo. Jogo attempts to retaliate, gets whacked in the head from behind, giving Jogo no chance to touch him. The Sukuna begins to track the fall of Gojo, grab his head and to add gravitational impact to the top of the building, Sukuna adding one of the best lines. The moonlight's illumination makes it easier to see how pathetic you are, mocking Jogo who did not comprehend the difference between Sukuna and himself of this magnitude. In addition, Jogo outbursts destroying a whole entire building after Sukuna to the Mickey Mouse. In the process, you can see that Jogo was about to unleash a huge attack and on top of that, Kusakabe was still fighting along with Panda. He quickly takes out the fodder and let everyone know the people above are special great. They're the elephants and at the moment we're the ants. They are really like that. So Kusakabe warning everyone and then he's about to leave until Sukuna comes in the car and demands no one moves and declaring that if they do, he will kill them. To all humans in the vicinity until he says otherwise, they're forbidden from moving. He pretty much had them waiting patiently, slowly, 
slowly now and off they went all this for jogo to think he hit sukuna but sukuna chills on top of the attack and stares jogo in the face he also asks jogo why not use your domain expansion but jogo even says he knows he would lose spoken like a true loser sukuna says sukuna then decides to utilize the speciality similar to jogo that being fire after saying the words open he followed it up by saying that a curse spirit wouldn't know so maybe perhaps a sorcerer would but a very mysterious a technique that is other than slicing and slashing which is sukuna specialty as sukuna aims at a jogo who is also ready to attack he prepares this to be the fire battle the fire power battle between the two rose of fire versus the flame arrow and then jogo sees everyone that has died apologizing to them you can see that he entrusted everything else to mahito death is the mirror for humans which is mahito himself they will be reborn but different so sukuna questions jogo you wanted to be human obviously not in that way but more in terms of taking their position sukuna even as humans flocking together curses flocking together leads to the weakness and stunts growth should have burned everything you desired to a cinder without thinking to read the heights of satoru gojo meaning that you know sukuna kind of give his respect to gojo and not worry about the future or identity but you lack the hunger to take hold of your desire jogo himself says it's actually been fun sukuna was happy telling jogo stand proud Jogo tearing up after being acknowledged by the King of Curses, showing human emotion, even he is confused. And Sukuna let him know he can't relate because those tears is not something that he would ever understand. So moving forward, Megumi still has a problem with Haruta in which he resorted to him explaining the 10 shadow technique. So the first stage being the 10 shadow technique starts with two divine dogs. The sorcerer and divine dogs must work together to exercise them. The sorcerer gains more shikigami to exercise the other shikigami. You can exercise the shikigami with multiple people. We then get a flashback which goes to when he talked with Megumi and explaining how in the past the head of the Gojo family had six eyes and limitless and the head of the Zeno family had the 10 shadow shadows but Megami makes a remark that the way the 10 shadow user drew with the 6 eye user was most likely due to the certain move because they both ended up killing each other Haruta says blah 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 you done and you can't use the shikigami unless you exercise them so Megami is carrying on his dialogue not a single 10 shadow user has been able to exercise this one Haruta is alarmed the Megami says with this treasure I summon the eight handled sword divergent Scylla, Divine General Maharaga, trapping Haruta and himself into an exorcism. Now Haruta and Megami have to defeat this ancient legend. Megami declared himself to be the first to pass on before getting whacked and there he goes. Haruta is standing there frantically stressed, helpless but Sukuna notices the energy from afar and went into the scene in the process saving Haruta. He then realizes if he didn't save Haruta, then it would have been a big, big problem because Megami would have died. Because he was actually in a suspended death, which will make sure that he's permanently killed. Sukuna uses a reverse curse technique on Megami, and Sukuna prepares to go up against Maharaga. So Maharaga slams his sword. Sukuna blocked and maneuvered to punch Maharaga in the face, uses his demantle, which slices Maharaga. Then we get an insight on the sword of extermination. This means if Sukuna was a cursed spirit, it'd be game over. But second time round, Sukuna dismantle was reacted to and deflected. This let Sukuna travel through buildings upon buildings, with Maharaga chasing him up instantly and heel kicked into the building. This is similar to the apparent Yamato Norochi. So when Maharaga realized that he was fighting someone else other than a cursed spirit, he then changed his positive curse energy, which would have obliterated the cursed spirit into a curse energy which actually ended up working with Sukuna taking him through buildings. Now Sukuna knowing what he's up against says you know what I'm gonna use the domain expansion. Malevolent Shrine. This has no barrier. A divine technique that's like an artistic painting on the air creating a 200 meter radius excluding Megami's position. Then 
we are met with a lot of people who were helped by Inamaki. Anything within the range, they use Klee, and inanimate objects, they use Dismantle, decimating everything within his range. Nothing was in sight. Maharaga is down as Sukuna realizes if he uses the firepower, he can take the opportunity to shoot him in the face and destroy Maharaga, giving it no time to adapt. Sukuna carrying the wheel throws it to the ground and without looking at Haruta tells him be gone. Then we are taught Haruta's technique. Haruta's memory are raised and stores giving him miracles in situations he shouldn't have survived. When life in danger, he has the miracles. He didn't know about this fact, but the luck ran out because of the Nanami fight, making his body cut in half. Sukuna feels like he has less time to control Yuji's body. Yaga looks from above and finds Megami healed. And Yaga also believes that he saw Yuji for a moment, but it was Sukuna. Sukuna, before letting Yuji take over, antagonizes him and says to Yuji to take a good look. In the process, Yuji realizes that hundreds dead and Haruta on the ground. He throws up disgusted at the horror that has just taken place and Yuji questions absolutely everything, wondering why he has to be the one to be killed, already knowing that he's gonna go out in a certain way, just him alone, remembering the words of his granddad, wondering why he has to be executed, remembering to help people. Yuji just felt he must drive on, completely, there's no choice but to fight. Nanami walking tired, with half of his body burnt and eaten, all he can think about is Malaysia, somewhere he can rest. But meanwhile, having to fight off transfigured humans with Mahito around the corner, build a house on the secluded beach, pretty much enjoying himself, thinking about Naobito and Maki, Megami and all. Nanami is tired, so tired after everything leading to this bitter end and manages to destroy all the transfigured humans around him with the extra energy he has left. And then Mahito's chest to Nanami. He wanted to have a talk, a conversation. Nanami's questions why he became a sorcerer and he left originally to no Haibara. Yuji Itadori was pointed to by Haibara showing this is your reason for this very moment. Itadori was told by Nanami last words trying to not curse him, but all he got was, you've got it from here. Yuji seeing so much happen, got so pissed off and shouted, what the hell are you, Maito? And Maito in the cheeky fashion says, I can hear you just well without you shouting, Yuji Itadori. Yuji instantly charges in, while Mahito releases a transfigured human like a Pokeball. Itadori dodging, then gets hit with Mahito's soul multiplicity, body repel, a technique that merges two or more souls, which creates a reaction when fused together by rejecting itself and Yuji grabs it. After that, Mahito comes through and punches Yuji into the skull with a deep cut in the face. Yuji questions Mahito wondering how he plays with people's lives so easily. Mahito also takes the piss by saying, would you prefer that I contemplate all the reasons for messing with their lives and look remorseful? The next time I kill someone, I will be sure to do that, okay? This was pretty funny from him, I'll be real. But we get hit with a simple answer. You are me, Mahito says. Mahito and Yuji are the same. Yuji said he will make it Mahito's dying words, thinking of Nanami and being composed again, and to show what it means to be a Jujutsu Sorcerer. Mahito thinks of other ways besides idol transfiguration to attack him, in which he is happy to change his limbs if he needs to, planning to stab Itadori in the heart and as soon as they engage, Mahito fist pierces the air. Itadori disappears with his knee release, an ancient martial art that eliminates starting movement. This move brings him to Maito, and Yuji uses Tidal Martial Arts, Manji Kick, then kicks Maito in the stomach. Maito spitting out some blood and is ready for round 2. So Maito does the dash, plants a trap with Yuji behind, and Maito's flinging him. But Yuji grabs onto a transfigured human and Mahito escapes. Yuji has to keep chasing Mahito due to the way he's moving. Mahito is trying to use transfigured humans to make sure Yuji's resolve is broken. Yuji looks for Mahito and then Mahito spawns out the mouth of a civilian. Now, 
we are given a flashback in which he stomps Jogo from tracking him down, splitting in two and running while using a transfigured human. This was shown to tell us Yuji's up against Mahito that doesn't have any other part to him. But the other Mahito is against Nobara. Nobara lets Mahito know that he is familiar with him in which Mahito feels famous. The clone seems to be nerfed and Nobara launches some hairpins at it. Mahito then tells her hey, yo, you missed with the hairpins and she then utilizes the hairpin to his full efficiency. Mahito's plan is overall to bring the dead body of Nobara to Yuji Itadori and destroy his soul. In other news, Maito throwing more bodies at Yuji like their toys, turning them into transfigured humans and Nobara is dodging Maito's hands at the same time. She was warned about Mahito so she's playing it smart. Kobe is far weaker than Itadori's one and cannot change shape all transfigured humans. Nobara nail trick actually did not work, drops some nails on Maito from above and also comes down landing on top of him and believe her soul resonance could help in this situation. Now the other Mahito also feels the resonance, meaning Nobara has put in an amazing job at the amazing time. As both of them, the doubles feel the effects, especially the original and vice versa. Mahito's natural enemy is not just Yuji Itadori but it's Nobara Kugizaki too. Nobara figured it out completely that he can't use his curse technique. This leads to Yuji to effing him up with barrage of punches and a mountain to huge damage. Yuji is thankful to Nobara showing him he's not alone. Maito double runs away. She feels that she has to chase Maito down because it might leave a room for error in the future. Yuji tries to punch but Maito splits and tricks him with curse energy. Yuji is confused, the double and Maito goes past each other. The real body switches with Mahito and in the blind spot to not notice that it's very difficult to see. Mahito jumps, she lets her guard down and against Mahito's hand in particular gets a direct hit in the face. Nobara has been hit and Yuji instantly decimates the double's body. Nobara is going through a past backstory, even being told in a game. Ironically, in Smash Bros to kill while the opponent is recovering which explains why she chased up with Mahito in the first place. Then she felt like she was the only sane person in the village. She even says 19 students in the entire school not even enough for one class at a regular school. She offers to trade a backpack to this girl. Nobara then goes to Yuri to play Smash Brother with the dad. She didn't really like the people of the village. Nobara was a certain way due to a certain influence, Sayori. She moved to the village after Nobara did. Nobara changed after meeting Sayori but became softer and more refined. Then one day, Nobara had some weird things happen in her life, Sayori was then about to leave and she was crying when she said goodbye to her. Nobara never spoke about Sayori again. She vows all three Fumi, Sayori and herself will see each other next time. Sayori during the current time has proofs due to Shibuya having a lot of issues at the moment. She believes they will all view her as boring and kind of disappointed if Nobara and Fumi saw her but she kind of hopes that Nobara is doing well since they said goodbye, wondering what exactly she's up to nowadays. And Nobara says to Fumi, she's sorry for not keeping the promise and hopes everyone is okay. Her last words to Yuji? It wasn't so bad and off goes Nobara. Imagine Gojo said before he had faith in everyone, yeah this was not one of those cases. Yuji has a flashback between the good times with his friends and sensei but right now it looks like nothing to be happy about at all. Yuji and Nobara were really close with each other which makes it all the more sadder. Kugizaki, Yuji said. The mix of emotions, losing to Choso, Sukuna's rampage, Kento Nanami's death, Yuji resolve has reached its limit a long time ago. Kugi Saki Kugi Maito is thrilled, deciding that yes, he is a true curse. And with an unexpected and sinister approach, Maito hits Yuji with none other 
than the Black Flash. The Sparks of Black do not choose who to bless, but Maito ridicules Yuji at the same time by saying, you thought you were gonna do some kind of pest control or ghost extermination like some make-believe story? You came to Shibuya with half assed determination. How naive you can be, you stupid brat. This is war, not a battle to fix what's wrong, a clash of truths. You and your fragile justice. You are me, Yuji Tadori. I kill without a second thought, just like how you save people without a second thought. The instincts of a cursed against the so-called dignity obtained by human reason? This battle to decide who would be standing for a thousand years. How will the hell did you think you could beat me when you don't even realize that? Tell me Yuji Tadori, have you ever stopped to count how many curses you've killed? <laughs> me neither. And Maito was about to decapitate Yuji in the process after that speech that hit powerfully. And then, clap, all of a sudden, a man that has once claimed to have a best of friend or comes to save the day. Nita is about to help Yuji too and Todo is ready for action against Mahito. But Yuji is weak, his mental isn't there, Yuji feels he can't fight no more. He updates Todo on everything, Nanami gone, Sukuna killings and Nobara, no one was helped. But he says to himself as a murderer, he cannot forgive himself. Maito asks for Yuji to speak up as he charges another attack and Todo kicks Maito into the ground and bounces, clapping to disorient him completely. Todo then comes with a speech and this speech was powerful. We are Jujutsu sorcerers. All of our allies together, we are Jujutsu sorcerers. As long as we live, our friends who have passed away will not truly have been defeated. It's not about the sins or punishment. The moment we become Jujutsu sorcerers, our lives cannot be limited to such misfortunes. Looking for meaning or logic in death can defy your memories or those we've lost, but what have you been entrusted with? Damn. Not needing a response, Yuji seems enlightened. For those of us who live as Jujutsu sorcerers, that is the punishment we must endure. The wounds Yuji endured won't get worse, pain should subside and the bleeding will stop, Nita says. Nobara has no pulse and is not breathing but there's a tiny chance she would make it. Maito attempts to grab Todo and in the process of trying to do that, he then gets clapped, incoming, making him difficult to catch. Maito throws a transfigure hearing at Todo and he dodges and Maito who is trying to predict the position of the next back flash as he feels it's coming. All of a sudden, he is clapped in front of Yuji Itadori, coming back from the dead and rising to take the responsibility that weighs on his shoulders. Yuji almost took the easy way out and remembered Nanami's words. Now Black Flash is used to hit Mahito back from the dead. The battle will be settled any minute now, but the scene which changes the pace a bit is seeing Makamaru speaking with Miwa. There is a 99% chance Todo would survive, said Makamaru in Shibuya. He didn't let them know at all because he doesn't trust that they'll survive in Shibuya. Makamaru just wanted to protect Miwa and he was running out of time. He then tells Miwa to find happiness any other way. The Kyoto second years were frustrated. It doesn't matter since Mecha is dead, but Momo says that whoever makes the junior cry will die. So back to schedule programming. Maito, Todo, Yuji now begin scrapping. Maito is wondering, can he really kill him with one taunt in the state he is in? Maito reckons Itadori's soul is about 10%, Todo is full health and himself is 40%. Double crushed, black flash and a rush of attacks in the huge amount that he's endured from Nobara, yeah Nobara pretty much hates her because she's a stupid girl. Maito tries to take out Todo and Todo switches again with a transfigured human based off the cursed energy alone. Todo's dialogue, the cursed spirit uses black flash, he's the only one being left behind. You've gotten stronger brother, but is Todo going to sit still? He does not want his brother to feel alone again. Then with a shock, 
a black flash from Ayui Toto hits Mahito, but it didn't hit his soul so it's pretty much useless. At this current moment, it didn't matter who you choose, all three were operating at 120% of their potential. And with no knowledge on what was happening, Mahito threw up transfigured humans, soul multiplicity, body repel, attacking all sides to prevent the clapping going on and then destroys the surface from underground and <laughs> it seems like there's a lot left in the tank and it's time to evolve. Todo claps, brings Mahito in his arms, Yuji tries to kick his head and Mahito dismembers it. His head turns alien-like, abusing the soul multiplicity but this time creates a body from the rejection of the souls unleashing the polymorphic soul Isomo. The body and Mahito fighting but Todo clapping and clapping all the way. They strategize but the body Todo thought was too weak ended up sending him flying through multiple buildings chases up Todo but Todo throws a rock behind it, claps with it to end up behind him and hit him with one punch. One hit is all it took to kill it but there was two more. The explosive power is all that was to them. Yuji now is up against Mahito who sends loads of body repel. Yuji glides but Mahito grabs him by the leg. Todo comes back instantly, destroy them quickly and Mahito knows if he uses domain expansion, Sukuno will pretty much kill him. So what he does? Mahito, thinking on the spot, with quick precision, a move learnt from the GOAT, Gojo himself. 0.2 seconds, domain expansion, self embodiment of perfection, is all or nothing. Total defense was about to become a simple domain. In reaction, Yuji's defense was to charge towards Mahito, but Mahito was the fastest as he activated his curse technique and comes face to face with Sukuna. Mahito was safe. He swears to kill Yuji before Sukuna can even switch with him. He should even think about it and he should shut up and watch. Todo feels his arm affected by the touch of Mahito and instantaneously cuts it off. Mahito hits Yuji, charges to eliminate Todo and he knows he can't use the curse technique so instead he uses a black flash to the gut. Todo should be dead but concentrate all his curse energy to the stomach, his manipulation is amazing. The technique is back and Todo can't clap his hands since his arm is cut off. Now the only thing he was able to do with the most clutch thinking was clap the hand of Mahito, bringing him in front of Yuji Itadori and using a black flash straight to the face. Now Todo is out for the count. Yuji and Mahito last round, for real for real for real. Mahito has ruined everyone Yuji loves and on top of that, he finds the essence of his soul, the true form, the instant spirit body of distorted killing, the new birth of Mahito helped with the black flash. The black flash has allowed them to learn his true soul and now they both devote to killing each other. Yuji with a kick to dodge Mahito and turn it into the Clash of Titans, Yuji giving it all his pure hand to hand combat. Gut punches and a sturdy body, Yuji also gets hit, Maito understanding his unbridled form, he's already different than the transformation he was before. Maito who has like a running playstyle or a way that he's not able to engage with you too much, he actually ended up doing head to head against Yuji, then ends up grabbing Yuji's face, slams it to the ground creating a huge crater on the floor. Yuji needs to use a black flash. We are reminded, no sorcerer can use it at will. Yuji Todori hits his thigh and lets Mahito know he's still got a lot left in him. So Mahito comes towards Yuji in speed, Yuji dodges and then it seems the difference between the two was one punch. Itadori makes you think he can use black flash at will. Itadori has countermeasures made against him by Mahito. Mahito conjures a plan to react to their black flash and in exchange of blows able to kill Yuji and he wins. Or so he thought, Yuji punch has a delayed impact in what we know to be the divergent fist. This move was not meant to exist, it was a bad habit he actually picked up. When his curse manipulation improved, he lost it but now against Choso, it showed that he can really control it. Then in a distance of beaming light and the voice that is familiar, Todo is able to use the move after he, we thought he's dead, the boogie woogie that 
was meant to be done as soon as his arm got cut off as it is an acclamation of the soul but it is a fake out and it is already dead allowing Yuji to hit and punch Mahito with the final black flash to the side of the torso not allowing him to operate. All transfigured humans were used, Yuji admits to him, I'm you and this is when Yuji's speech was used. He was in acceptance of his character telling Marito, you're right, I was trying to convince myself that I was not you Mahito but I was wrong but that don't matter anymore, Yuji will kill him. Even if Mahito comes back as a curse, he will kill him, change the name, change the form, he will kill you again. He don't need a meaning or a reason to do so. Maybe a hundred years in the grand scheme of things, things may be more clearer. Right now he's nothing more than a cog, but will just keep killing curses till the day he dies. Yuji walks down to Mahito like a predator catching his prey, a wolf to a rabbit. Then a man appears, a familiar face, that was Brain, Ghetto's body in action, requested to Maito an opportunity to be saved. There becomes a change of pace where we see what happened to Kusukabe and Panda. And Kusukabe knowing Yuji is meant to have control and he will not be on Yuji's side if things remain with Gojo being sealed and everyone having a problem with him. Then we are changed to Malaysia where Meimei in the bed with Yu Yu, then Meimei gets caught. It seems in a way she lies about her name and tells the person on the phone that they got there due to Yu Yu, cursed her nuke. In addition, telling them to sell Japanese stock and Tokyo real estate is down here from there, the economy especially considering Japan being the third largest economy, I wonder who she's speaking to exactly, well I'm not 100% sure. Back to Choso under the dream illusion is affected negatively from the looks of it, questioning himself and what Yuji is. He is going to find out some way or another. Yuji runs towards Brain, demanding the return of Satoru Gojo as he recognizes the stitches on his head. The Brain explains to Yuji that in the Edo period, they believed earthquakes underground was due to catfish and suddenly Yuji is standing on top of Void weighing him down immeasurably and gravity sends him down. Brain gave him an illusion to being on the ground and falling, Yuji himself doesn't know what just happened. The strength of cursed spirit manipulation lies in the great number of moves at Brain's disposal. Brain explains he has multiple curses of semi grade 1 plus so he act of display he powers Yuji completely with cursed spirits overwhelming him. Brain even says if Ghetto didn't divide the cursed spirits between Shinjuku and Kyoto, he would have beaten Okotsu. Yuji bloodied up, still pleads for Gojo saying give it back while Brain is impressed with Yuji. Now this didn't stop the fact that out of nowhere, Mahito's hand reaches trying to grab Kenjaku. Kenjaku swiftly dodges and says I knew, after all, I was born of humans. Brain suck Mahito to become one of the cursed spirits within his curse manipulation. Now Brain explains if Yuji is familiar with maximum techniques, it's the next best thing of the domains. Curse manipulation technique Maximum Uzumaki combines all cursed spirits, he has this into one and hit an opponent with super condensed curse energy, but it's not just recycling curses and attacking them. When with a semi grade 1 curse, or higher, you can use the curse technique for your own. Then, as he is Mahito, he looks above seeing Momo in sight, but Brain notices her already. The Kyoto teams up, Notoshi shoots his arrow toward Brain which he dodges. Out of nowhere, a sniper shot comes out. Kenjaku likes and agrees it's wise to use conventional weapons when attacking the sorcerer. Suddenly, the third attack coming from Miwa. Given the speech on her mother dyeing her hair black in junior high, she met the person that she would become mentor to, uh, choosing to become a Jujutsu sorcerer as well. Miwa was then from behind, come with a new shadow style, putting her all, everything my present future into this. Even with the possibility of never swinging the katana again, battle sword drawing. But no, brain breaks the blade. And uses Maximum Uzumaki with death, staring Miwa in the face. But the man Kusakabe comes in the clutch and defends Momo and Miwa, 
Panda sees Yuji for the first time, sees Sukuna and is relieved he is back to normal. All of a sudden, an unknown person, who only known to Yuji and Brain, Choso enters the mix. Choso then states that he has three parents, mother, cursed spirit that impregnated her and a man that mixes the blood with theirs both, as well as toying with his mother, earning Choso's hate. So it seems this man is none other than Naruto Shikamo, the evilest Jujutsu sorcerer in history, a man over 150 years old. The brain says the name is one of many, so you have the option of calling him whatever. Choso goes for and attacks him, annoyed that Kamo tried to get him to kill his little brother, but Yurume pulls up to defend. How did Choso figure this out? He has a cursed technique which allows him to sense the transformation of his younger brothers through their blood connection no matter how far they are. So when he almost killed Yuji, this exact thing happened, meaning Yuji, his younger brother, so he would do everything in his power to protect him. Piercing blood, brain dodges as Yurume blocks and then hones in towards the brain, initiates hand to hand combat, putting his life on the line for his younger brother. As this is happening, they even ask Yuji if that's the brother, in which he almost says no, he almost killed me. But Panda says this happened with Todo too, what kind of weird pheromones are these? Nothing seemed over, so everyone starts to be on the offensive, until they are hit with the frost calm by Yurume. She attempts to kill Choso, and then Yuji comes in the clutch, it seems she actually throws everyone besides Sukuna's vessel. Momo then tries to use a useless attack, the scythe attack, which then buys time or tries to buy time for Yutaime. It looks like another attack from Yurume is coming which is on the wider scale and it actually could kill them all, until a familiar face arrives, that being the special great sorcerer, Yuki Tsukumo, the lady that was a mentor for Todo. What kind of girls are you into is her line. Now, the discussion between what ideals they both have and the talk of what they each desire to happen to the new world. For Yuji, the next stage of humanity lies in breaking away from cursed energy. For Kamo, it lies in optimizing cursed energy, both polar opposites of each other. Compared to Japan, extremely few Jujutsu sorcerers and cursed spirits are actually alive overseas. They don't have the Tengen barrier, so they are not able to optimize their cursed energy which is helpful for optimizing and becoming a monopoly in Japan. This would then cause war from power hungry men in other countries, whereas Brain doesn't look for a world without cursed spirits or idyllic peace. He wants to see countless possibilities and see what the optimal use of cursed energy is, as if he's a scientist, insane, answers like these flicker in chaos. But due to extracting Mahito, he now has the power to do so. He used the idol transfiguration to affect the barrier of Tengen as it manipulates his soul. Now, with this, he evaded making contracts with people and the people who had ingested cursed objects like Yuji Tadori, as well as cursed techniques whose brains were meant for non sorceress like Junpei, awakened by him. The brains for sorcery were adjusted and gave some strength towards him. Kamon has now broke the seal on the cursed objects. Some have been deep in slumber and will now awaken for the next stage. And now they will all fight each other, creating a thousand malevolent Yuji Itadoris. Now everyone is about to start fighting again, but the results show the tiredness of all. Yuji breaks the ice to let himself free. Yurume is affected by the poison of the piercing blood. Naruto Shikamo and Panda actually just recently got from the ice, Yuki look like he's ready to fight, so on and so forth. But most of all, Brain, Kamo, whatever you like to call him, made vows with sorcerers in the past for the longest which he does not need to commit to anymore ever since he got the body of Ghetto. Due to the cursed manipulation of course and using Mahito's ability, then forth comes cursed spirits in high volume taking over Japan. Then Ghetto Brain, whoever you want to call it, says goodbye Yuji to do. Gojo is being taken away in the process which Yuji then screams for, but he then says he expects a lot from Yuji to do. They failed in obtaining Gojo back and Ghetto lets Sukuna know that it is beginning once again, the world of Hyena, the golden age of cursed techniques. 
This concludes the story of the greatest arc in Shonen, the Shibuya Incident Arc. I love this arc and personally wouldn't wish to talk about any other series like this. Anyway, remember, if you made it this far, you know, just leave a like. I subscribe as well, I'd appreciate it, trust me. And yeah, as I say to the new and old people, now come and visit my channel, Jana.